How's it going everyone? Welcome back. So in today's video, I'll show you guys step by step how to root your Android 15 device so that you can access things that the developers have sort of barricaded away from the public use. Now, this process is not exactly a couple of clicks, though it will guide you through it from the beginning to the end to make sure everything is effortless to follow. So don't worry if you're not exactly tech savvy. And if you found this video helpful, consider giving us a like and subscribe as it helps our channel a lot. Alright, so this process is going to be split into two parts. The first one is going to be installing the right tools on your PC and phone so that you can use your PC to run commands on your phone. And the second part is going to be the actual rooting process. That being said, this process might not be applicable to Android devices that are less known like Oppo and Vivo due to the lack of community supported tools. So if you do have any of these, I'll leave a link in the description that will take you to the XDEF forums where you can find the specific method for your Android device by typing in the model name in the search bar. Oh, and uh, one more thing, phones that are provided by cell phone carriers, mainly in the US, have their bootloaders sealed and there's no way to unlock it. And so, since we can't use the bootloader, this method won't work on such devices. That said, any phone outside these couple of exceptions, even older Android models can be rooted with this process I'm about to show you. Alright, so the first step is to download something called ADB and Fastboot++ on your PC. The tool is available on XDA forums, you'll have to be redirected a couple of times to reach the installer download. So to save you some time, I'll leave a link in the description down below. Once you've reached the releases page, scroll down until you reach the assets section and click on adb and fastbootinstaller.msi, this should start the download. Then click on the installer when it finishes downloading. Alright, so the installer should be pretty straightforward. A couple of prompts where you'll have to hit next and continue, and you should be good to go. The only thing I would recommend here is taking an option to have a shortcut directly on your desktop, but that's already set up by default, so don't worry about it. So that's the first tool downloaded. And the next one should be already installed on your PC if you have Windows 10 and up. And that's Windows PowerShell. But in case you don't already have it, I'll also leave a link in the description below for you to download it. Now, the next thing we're going to do here is enable USB debugging on our device. This would basically allow us to transfer program apps from our PC to our mobile device via USB. Aside from that, this step also includes enabling developer mode, which we're going to need in the later steps. So we're basically hitting two birds with one stone. Okay, so to do this, go to your phone settings and scroll down until you see the about phone section. Then scroll down until you see the build number, which should be right at the bottom. Click on the build number seven times and this would enable developer options. Now, in case you have a password or a pin on your phone, you're going to have to input it before accessing the developer options panel. Scroll down a bit and you'll see a section that was not previously there and that's the developer options. From here, scroll down the menu till you see the USB debugging option. So go ahead and enable that. And now you can transfer files via USB. Okay, so the next thing here is going to be unlocking the bootloader option on your Android device. And here you're going to want to back up your phone either on a cloud service or on your computer before proceeding because this will completely wipe out all your data and factory reset your device. Once you're done backing up your device, you're going to have to go to the developer options menu we unlocked earlier and look for an option called OEM unlocking to toggle it on. After that, you're going to have to put your device into fastboot mode. To enable fastboot mode, first you're going to have to completely shut down your device, then press both the on button and the volume down button at the same time and hold it till fastboot mode is enabled. Activated. One thing to note here, depending on your device, you might have a different method to go into fastboot, like pressing volume up instead of down. So if this doesn't work, you can simply google what buttons to press to go into fastboot. Alright, so in this mode, you won't be able to interact with the screen and you'll be using the volume buttons to scroll up and down the fastboot menu with the on button being the confirm key. And the next thing we're going to do here is plug in our device into the computer and open up the ADB and Fastboot++ shortcut on our desktop, which is basically a command panel. Then we're going to type the command Fastboot Devices and then press enter to make sure that our device is properly read by our PC. If it was, you're going to see your device serial number and then Fastboot. But if you face an error here, this is most likely due to the USB cable or your device USB drivers being outdated though it is most likely a cable issue. Okay, now that you've confirmed your device is good to go, we're gonna run the common fastboot flashing to unlock and then click enter. This would display an intro page to unlock the bootloader on our device. But in case this command prompt does not display this intro on your phone, you can try fastboot OEM unlock, which should do the trick. It could be either of these two depending on the Android model you have. For newer devices, it's mostly fastboot flashing unlock. Now go back to your device and you should see a do not unlock bootloader. 
option next to your on button. Simply click the sound button up one time and it will show you unlock bootloader option. So click the on button to enable it. Now give the device some time to boot up as this is basically a factory set, which takes a while. Then proceed to set up your device like you'd normally do when you get a new device. Now to confirm you have the bootloader unlocked, you can go back to the developer options and check the OEM unlock option, which should be disabled with a bootloader unlocked underneath it. Okay, now that we're done unlocking the bootloader, we can now proceed to root our Android 15 device. First, you're gonna have to download an app on your phone called Magisk, which I'll leave a link in the description down below. Make sure to download it from this link as this is the only official source where Magisk is available. If you find this anywhere else, it might be malware or spyware, so be careful. Once you open the GitHub page, scroll down to downloads and there you'll see a Magisk v27.0 icon. Press on it and then install the app on your phone once it's done downloading. Then you're gonna want to download the Android 15 firmware folder on your computer from this website right here. Now this website is only for Pixel devices, so if you have a Samsung model or any other model, you can go to samfw.com or sammobile.com, type your model name in the search bar and download the firmware that matches your country of residence. Once the file is done downloading, extract the firmware zip folder we just downloaded, open up this folder and look for another zip folder within it. Don't extract this one as we only need a couple of files from it. Just open it and look for boot.img and inet.boot.img. Select these two and extract them out the zip folder. Now I'm going to be using the inet.boot.img for this tutorial, but if you have an older Android model, you might want to use normal boot.img. It just depends on your device. So if one doesn't work, it's probably the other one. Now, once you extract the files, connect your device to your computer and copy the img file on your phone in a folder you can easily find for later. Okay, now that we've extracted and copied the right img file onto our phone, we're going to open the Magisk app and click on the install option at the top right of the screen. Then click on select and patch a file. Choose the IMG file we just copied on the device and click on let's go. Give it some time to finish flashing the file and it should let you know when the process is done. Then on this same screen, it should show you where it created something called an output file on our device. And this path should be at the bottom of this screen. To give you an example, it should be named magisk underscore patch and then a bunch of numbers following it. And so we're gonna go back to our PC and copy the same file and paste it inside the folder where our ADB and Fastboot tools got installed. Then we're gonna put in our device into Fastboot mode again and open the command prompt shortcut we've used earlier on our PC. Now we're gonna type in the command fastboot flash ina underscore boot, press space and then press tab, which should autofill the name of the file since it's within the same folder as ADB and Fastboot tools, or you can just type the file name manually. Then click enter and you should see two OK responses here. Once you've seen these two OK responses, go back to your phone and click on the odd button to start the device, which will show you the typical reboot process. Oh, and unlike earlier, this process does not factory reset your device, only unlocking the bootloader does. Now once your phone boots up, open the Magus app again and allow it to install any additional setups if it asks you to, which will reboot the device again. Then, once it completes the reboot, open the Magisk app again, and it should tell you that version 27.0 is installed, which was previously a no before rooting the device. This basically means that your device is now successfully rooted. But if you want to check directly whether your phone is rooted or not, you can download a free app called Root Checker from the Play Store and click Verify Root on the home screen. This would ask for Magus super user access permission, so permit it to complete the check. And it should tell you that the device is successfully rooted with the version of the software right underneath it. And that's basically it for this video on how to root an Android 15 device. If you guys found this video helpful, I would really appreciate it if you drop a like and subscribe to the channel for more tech related stuff. And if you have any questions or face any issues during this process, please do let me know in the comments as I love interacting with you guys and answering as much as I can. Again, thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Have a wonderful day.